Hello everyone, welcome to the first lecture on money and finance course. Uh, this lecture is basically from Bay and Jensen's chapter number one, uh, reading which is money and banks. And this is our learning structure. Hai. Broadly, we will talk about the definition of money. Just a moment, yeah. Definition of money. And then we'll move on to the functions. And we'll also study about the types, physical properties of money and a little bit about how banks have evolved over the years. Now, this slide itself is very important and I would like to emphasize that once you finish this lecture, uh, you can come back to this slide and just have a look at it and see if there's anything in this, any concept in this, in this particular slide, in this flow chart that you are not able to pick up and you can give us the feedback as well. Now, uh, so let's start the lecture now. Uh, so what basically is money? Uh, so money is basically anything that is generally accepted as a medium of exchange. So kya matlab hua isa ki hum kisi bhi aisi koi bhi cheez jo ki medium of exchange serve kar sakti hai usko hum money keh sakte hai. Kya matlab hua iska? So kya iska ye matlab hai ki agar aaj mere paas say uh, one not one dollar, let's say it's one kg of rice hai or uh, agar my rice ko kisi ko uh, kisi ko deke uske, uske badle mein uske badle mein agar mein usse say one kg wheat le sakta hoon to kya, kya ye, kya one kg of rice jo hai wo money hai ya nahi hai is it money or not and we'll come back to this question ki, uh, if that is the case and for that we must first see the functions of money. That's something which we will following slides. Mein dekhenge. So, uh, but for time being, let us just, just, just focus on this particular uh, definition of money and uh, just see that, you know, uh, that we can, so I, broad idea once again here is that uh, money Money is basically anything that we can use to pay for goods and services or settle debt, bullet number two. And it's a very intuitive definition. So nothing to explain uh, explain here, but there's something the third bullet talks about, which is can financial asset such as savings account be categorized as money? Well, uh, they can be categorized as money, but remember, they do not satisfy the medium of exchange condition. Why? Because they are not at all liquid. What does liquidity mean? So, if I have a watch, let's say, a watch, hai, and if I convert this watch to the market, mein, rupees mein convert karke, un rupees se transaction kar sakta hun, then basically this asset, let's say I call this asset or this, this watch as an asset, this watch or rather this, this asset is basically liquid. But what if this watch, nobody wants to buy it. Nobody, nobody is keen to uh, come to me and say, you know, I can pay you this, this many rupees for this watch. And in that case, that watch might be illiquid. Now this kind of a problem can occur with savings account. आपके पास एक bank account है, savings account है, आप market में जाके आप ये नहीं कह सकते shopkeeper को कि आ, मेरे savings account में इतने rupees हैं और मैं आपके यहां से 500 का shopping कर सकता हूँ, ये आप नहीं कह सकते, of course, आपके पास एक medium है debit card, जिसके थ्रू आप ट्रांजैक्शन कर सकते हैं, but on the whole savings account alone does not will not allow you uh, to uh, the, the, will won't allow you uh, to satisfy the medium of exchange condition. With this, we can now move on to the functions of money, uh, जो कि बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक है. Uh, so what basically uh, you mean by functions of money? So you can say that these are like chief uh, you know features of money so uh, what functions do to this money serves uh, in an economic system and the first function uh, something which we have already focused on 
is that money serves as a medium of exchange and you realize aise aise bahut sare assets ho sakte hain jo ki medium of exchange condition satisfy kare but jo baki condition shayad satisfy na kare so what does basically here medium of medium of exchange means and to really appreciate this point we have to first think in terms of barter system so barter system kya hai barter system mein basically there is person 1 and person 2 and they both hold some kind of an asset let's call it uh, let's call this asset as I, as i said before let's take a very simple case let's say 1 kg of rice and 1 kg of wheat and there is no money in the system no money in the system so in that situation in that situation uh both of them can transact only if person 1 is willing to exchange her rice with wheat and the same must apply to person 2 that is person 2 says i can exchange my wheat for rice so only when this this double coincidence of wants condition double coincidence of wants condition is satisfied will there be an exchange exchange of goods so in a in a in a way in a way what money does is it basically bypasses this condition double coincidence of wants and that that way it makes it things more efficient than a barter system and in that sense it also reduces the trans transaction cost so we may now look at another function of money which is that it serves as a, as a unit of account and what it basically means is that we can express price of goods and services in terms of some local currency just a moment right so the question here is what's wrong with barter system now let's take one example and the example here let's a very simple example wherein we have like say three goods now if there are three goods and we're trying to bar and we are in a barter system now in that case we can express price of good one in terms of 2 and 3 and we can also express price of good 2 and good 3 so basically we'll have one price here one price here and one price here so overall we'll have three prices for three goods effectively if there are n goods n commodities then there will be n c2 prices so for example if i if i take the case of say uh, five goods then i'll have how many prices this won't come in the examination but it's just for your understanding we'll basically have 10 prices so you see as number of goods keep increasing in the economy barter system becomes a lot more tedious we tend to have more number of prices than number of goods and one example that you can look at it basically uh, the robinson crusoe economy uh, but that's only for your reference so in a way barter makes the transaction a lot more complicated and in efficient now we can move on to the third function of money which is store of value so what does store of value means it simply means that whatever form of money we are carrying its value should not change from today to tomorrow and remember that when we are saying making this statement in this context in this example at least it's in strictly nominal terms you can say it's in real terms if the price remains constant but that's not the case 
But we do know one thing that 100 rupees today remain the same as tomorrow. So in a way, some purchasing power is certainly being transferred from one period of time to another. So in that sense, money must uh, store purchasing power over time. What about other alternatives? So let's take the case of fruits and vegetables or a car. Or for that matter, you can look at your mobile phones. If you buy a mobile phone today for 10,000 and you go to market to sell it again, say after one month, there's a very fair chance you may not receive the full 10,000 even if the phone is in perfectly good condition. You'll probably receive less than that. 8,000 maybe. Likewise, for commodities like fruit and vegetables, they're perishables. You can't, you can't store them over a longer period of time. So in that sense, they do not really store value. But other assets such as stocks or bonds or saving deposits, they act as a store of value. And you can, you can, you can verify it. For example, take the case of a bond, a very simple bond, which pays, say, 10% annual rate of return. So you have $100 today. And after one year, it gives you 110. So in a way, investing in this bond basically uh, stores the value of your $100, but it not just stores the value, it also increases the value. So in that sense, you are better off in future by investing in bonds. Same argument applies for savings deposit also, where interest rates uh, hover somewhere between 4% per annum. Same argument may or may not apply to a stock, but in this context, I presume Bay and Jensen assumes that the value of stock probably increases over a period of time or probably it provides a dividend. So in that sense, it can be treated as a store of value. Now we look at the fourth function of money, which is that it can serve as a standard of deferred payment. And let's take one very simple example. And let's say that uh, the example here is basically that uh, today I buy you a coffee at Dunkin Donuts and uh, what you say is that, okay, maybe I will give you cash in the morning. But let's say that we are in a barter system mein hai. and we are in a barter system where I say, you know what, uh, you paid, you, 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 uh, I bought you a coffee yesterday, but maybe today you should buy me a burger. But you say, no, 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 I can't buy you a burger. I will want to pay you in terms of pizza. So maybe I want two burgers. Uh, you will say, no, I'll only pay you one pizza. So you see the amount of complexity that barter system brings in. And money in that sense tries to resolve that complexity. Now we can look at uh, different types of money. And uh, the first one is basically a commodity money. Now, before I can explain you what commodity money is, uh, let us uh, let me first give you one example here. An example is basically, uh, say, a government decides that it wants to use one ounce of gold and mint a gold to mint a gold coin. Now, in this sense, if you notice, there are two things at work. Number one, the intrinsic value of this gold coin, which is basically the value of the gold itself, and the face value of this gold coin. So, let's say that uh, the, the intrinsic value. So if, if I get this gold coin, maybe I can go to market and sell this uh, as, a, as a commodity and earn some dollars. And in that sense, uh, not, so, not, so as to prevent people from doing that, it has to be a case that the face value of this, of this coin has to be equal to intrinsic value. So this is what is known as a full bodied money a full bodied money. Basically, 
we're using a gold uh, we're using gold ounce uh, an ounce of gold to mint a gold coin and what is basically our uh, representative full bodied money and or the example i have given here the gold certificate well there's hardly any difference here the only difference here is that we issue on a piece of paper a certificate which says that i have bought a uh, say uh, that this paper is worth let's say 100 dollars of gold or something like that so in that sense it becomes a representative full bodied money so it derives its value from a, from gold only but it can be used for transaction purposes and the next one is basically the fiat money now broadly these are two different types of money but we'll also talk about something called checkable deposits uh, we'll come back to that what is basically fiat money what is fiat money now basically fiat money runs on faith on the government so there is government it promises uh, its citizens that say a 500 rupee note is backed by it so if 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 i want to make this pay, a payment of 500 rupees and let's say if or rather uh, i want to make this payment of payment of 500 rupees then th nobody can say i will not accept this currency in this country because that this is a legal tender this is a legal tender so basically what we notice here is that in case of fiat money the value itself is backed by the government government is saying this piece of paper which has 500 printed on it and some other features as well some security features is worth rupees 500 so there is no commodity backing this uh, this 500 rupees note so in india uh, these the rupee notes are backed by the central bank which is reserve bank of india and there is one more form of uh, uh, money which is your checkable deposits and it's it's it can be said to be for example consider the bank checks are they money well as long as somebody is willing to accept a check they are a money basically we can go to a bank we can uh, write a check and withdraw that money or we can give it give that check to somebody else and that person can go to our bank and withdraw that money so that's also a form of money but broadly from exam point of view these are the two important types of money so in this slide we'll talk about physical properties of money and the first property uh, that we'll talk about is portability so consider a currency like gold okay now you might say hey you know what i can carry gold with me so i can carry gold with me so it is portable well you can't carry one kg of gold wherever you go can you it's too inconvenient however you can carry 10,000 rupees currency in your pocket or uh, yeah you can carry carry a, the physical cash with you if you want to there is some way out of course if, if you, uh, you you need a bigger bigger uh, suitcase if you want to carry say uh, tens tens of lakhs or crores of rupees but still you can carry it it's portable nothing stops you from uh, traveling with your money you can carry it but the same is not the case with gold likewise consider the property of divisibility if you have 1 kg of gold can you break it into 1 gram of 1 gram coins of 1000 1 gram coins can you do that not really but if you have 1000 rupees notes or let's say 500 rupees notes because there are no 1000 rupees notes now post demonetization 
you can break it into five notes of 100 rupees each nothing would stop you from doing that so in that sense it is divisible now coming to durability so this is where gold and silver coins we feel they are durable in fact there are gold gold and silver coins of uh, victorian era and they can be found in museum lekin jo ek perishable commodity hai agar main kehta hu ki ha mujhe malum hai one month later price of bananas will increase and i should start holding bananas now because they are cheap in the market so in that case uh it won't make any sense even though bananas it might appear to me one month prior that they can hold the value in fact the value will increase rather if i am expecting the price to increase but then they are a perishable commodity as as time will come i'll realize that uh i can't sell them because they have rotten so money should be durable and last it must be recognizable and the best example to that i can give you is will you transact with me using a bitcoin well uh, someone who is more adventurous may may transact in bitcoin but not everyone will thus money must satisfy these four physical properties to be satis to be known as money now we can discuss the function of banks and the first function is that they serve as depositories so when you want to deposit your money in the bank uh you just go to bank and deposit it savings account jaise ho gaya aapka savings account or current account fixed deposits so in that sense bank aapko aap aapke paise ko as a deposit rakh leta hai aur aapko ek us pe fixed interest rate deta hai usually 4% per annum so that ways bank serves as a depository they also serve the provide the function of uh, demand deposit which means that when you need your money you can go to your bank and take that money out bank won't stop you from that and banks also serve as financial intermediaries so basically bank kya kaam karta hai bank aap aapka deposit leta hai apne paas so basically uh, you are a saver and you deposit this money in the bank what bank does is basically it lends this money to someone who needs it so maybe the bank is paying you 4% but it's charging 9% to a borrower and whatever uh, the difference on those funds that is 5% it earns at its profit or margin as we call it but question yahan pe ye hai ki fayda kya hai intermediary bank bank ke intermediary function ka and uh, jo sabse pehla fayda hai wo hai ki uh, aapka time bachta hai suppose let, let's assume ki aapke paas aapke paas uh, uh, 10 lakh rupees hai aur aap kisi ko lend karna chahte hain the question is ki aap wo uh, borrower kahan se dhoondenge kya interest rate obligation hogi ye sab figure out karne mein aapko kafi time waste hoga aapka so in that sense bank saves time not just your time but also borrower's time second thing bank also takes care of liquidity risk so let's let's say that kal ko agar aapko apna paisa withdraw karna hai from savings account so you can go to your bank and you can withdraw that money so savings accounts are like liquid you can withdraw them you can withdraw the money when you, whenever you want to withdraw them and it 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 happens by means of fractional reserve something we will learn in the following lectures pool small deposit so that huge, huge loans can be made so ho sakta hai ki aapke paas 10 lakh ho but borrower ki demand ho 1 crore ki 
So basically, then he'll have to reach out to more uh, uh, more people, uh, rather I would say more uh, uh, lenders. So basically, it can rather reach out to a bank and it saves his time as well. And but one of the most important functions, uh, rather I would say benefit of an intermediary is diversification. बहुत ही बड़ा एडवांटेज है ये इमेजिन कीजिए आप आपके पास 10 लाख रुपीस हैं और आपके पास तीन लोग आते हैं आपने पहले को तीन दिया दूसरे को चार दिया तीसरे को तीन दिया यानी थ्री लैक्स फोर लैक्स एंड थ्री लैक्स इच द प्रॉब्लम इज डिफॉल्ट रिस्क आपको नहीं मालूम है कि इन तीनों लेंडर्स का इन तीनों बोरवर्स का डिफॉल्ट रिस्क क्या है आपको नहीं मालूम है कि क्या ये एक साल बाद लेट्स अगर ये एक साल का लोन है एक साल बाद क्या ये पैसा वापस आपके पास आएगा या नहीं आएगा और अगर नहीं आता है तो आपका सारा ही पैसा जो है वो एक तरह से डूब सकता है सो इन अ वे वट बैंक डज इट इट प्रोफाइल द कस्टमर्स सो वेर अब कस्टमर्स विद good rating bad rating poor rating and it charges an interest rate corresponding to their uh, profile right so in that sense also bank or other financial intermediaries they reduce they reduce the default risk the risk of default is basically that you won't recover your money at all wo jo risk hai wo diversification se banks jo hai wo कट डाउन करते हैं बाय लैंडिंग अक्रॉस टू अ डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ बोरोस एंड यस ऑफ कोर्स बैंक कैन इवेल्युएट द क्रेडिट वर्दीनेस ऑफ बोरोस एंड मॉनिटर्स देम सो ऐसा हो सकता है कि uh, ऐसा हो सकता है कि से किसी ने अपना मोटगेज दे मोटगेज दे के लोन लिया हुआ है एंड उस मोटगेज का जो प्राइस है मार्केट प्राइस है वो गिर जाता है सो बेसिकली बैंक कैन रीच आउट टू दैट पर्सन एंड नेगोशिएट द मोटगेज टर्म्स एंड कंडीशन सो दिस आर बेसिकली बट बट दैट समथिंग यू यू मे नॉट बी एबल टू डू बिकॉज बिकॉज यू नो इट्स नॉट एन इंस्टीट्यूशन पर से यू बेसिकली इफ इफ यू आर डीलिंग डायरेक्टली विद 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 द बोरवर देर कैन बी डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ हैसल्स यू माइट फेस सो इन दैट सेंस banks really serve this purpose much more efficiently than an individual would thank you